Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. It's that time of year we have come to the rackets of the year, the gear of the year as I usually call it. Rackets for 2022, I've tried almost everything, at least every significant release of the year. If you have any feedback, suggestions, stuff I missed, put them in the comments below. But these are my favorite rackets of the year in different categories. I try to put them in control for 98 and control for 100 and so on because 98 and 100 square inches are the most common head sizes on the marketplace by far. In 98 also include 97 and 95 because there are not many 95 and 97 square inch rackets on the market as you know these days. First off let's look at the best intermediate beginner frame I've tested this year and that goes to the Head Extreme Team Light. It's a very, very good racket, very nice comfort, 105 square inches, easy power, easy spin, good for the arm. The new Extreme Lighter versions impressed me a lot this year. The Extreme Team and the Extreme Team Light, excellent frames. I even used the Extreme Team customized uh, against some good players and it holds up pretty well. So. These frames with like a 65 to 61 RA for the team version are excellent rackets. Depending on what kind of weight range you're in, you can also customize them a bit. But for beginners, the extreme team light is as good as it gets. And I'm very happy with this frame. I wish I had a frame like this when I started playing tennis because it makes things much easier. Good, good height over the net, good depth on your shots, but you still can control the ball. So the new extremes are very, very good rackets and deserve a mention in several of these categories, but this one they, they took home. Check out the Head Extreme Team Light, but I also like the Extreme Team. Those two light rackets are very, very good. Special mention to the Clash 108 version 2 that came out this year. It's also a very nice racket, arm friendly, a little bit more difficult to control than the Extreme Team Light but worth considering as well if you prefer Wilson. So that's the intermediate beginner racket category. I haven't tried that many beginner rackets this year. I try to try everything, but uh, this one stood out to me and it was very, very good. And also something I played with myself when I, for example, play with my father, who's a, who's a weaker player, but plays a lot of tennis and we can rally and I want something that is a bit easier to use. If I was a coach, I would use something like this to feed balls and, and hit with uh, players who doesn't hit that hard back. This brings me to the next category, the 100 square inch power rackets. This is a very popular category. This is where you find the pure drive, but that was released last year. But this year we had an update to the Yonex E-Zone 100. And this update was very impressive to me. I thought it offered better control, better stability, just a better racket than the predecessor. And I felt like, despite not being a guy who usually plays with these frames, this is actually one of the rackets I consider playing tournaments with. I've tried it in match play. It's performed well against good players. Just a very, very solid racket. From pretty much everywhere on the court, you get some extra power on your serve, on ground strokes, holds up at the net. I've added just a tad of weight at the top myself, but you don't really need to add anything for this frame. It's a very good contender. The only issue I've really noticed when playing with it a lot is that it's a bit firm. So uh, consider that when you're stringing it, unless you have no history of arm issues whatsoever. Also a mention to the Wilson Ultra 100 version 4, a much improved version from version 3, which was stiff, a little bit, no connection to the ball. This one much improved, better feeling, better comfort, decent control. Did not feel quite as connected in terms of control as to the E-Zone, that's why I ranked that a bit higher. But this one is also very good, as my fellow playtesters have noted. So, in the power category, 100 square inches, the E-Zone reigns supreme, but the Wilson Ultra 100 deserves a solid mention. When looking at 98 square inch power rackets, it's a little bit the same thing. The ESO 98 was the most impressive racket of the 98 square inch rackets in this category. Very solid power, good control, better control, and a little bit better comfort than the 100 square inch version. I think many players will love the ESO 98. Some pros try to switch to it, Kokinakis, Shapovalov, and so on. They have since gone back to the V cores or the arrows, it seems like, but this is a very solid performer and probably the best ESO 98 since the DR 98, which is still uh, one of those icons that a lot of players look for. The main contender of this racket is a surprise. It's the Fury Arma Pro 98, a new brand hailing from New York. 
a little bit of a funky street brand. They do some apparel and so on as well. But this frame is just very well constructed, boxy beam, but lots of power. Uh, also 98 square inches and a little bit more of a traditional player frame than the E-Zone, a bit more swing weight on it. A bit of a boxier beam, kind of like a pro staff meets an E-Zone style racket, uh, good power. I was considering switching to this frame, then my father stole them from me, which is fine. He's also playing some ITF 65-year-old tournaments and this racket really impressed him. It has a little bit of an explosiveness in the string bed where you sometimes feel like the ball goes a bit further than you expected. Also similar from the Boom Pro or the Clash 98. This is a little bit of a trampoline in the string bed, but overall an excellent performer. Uh, one of the best rackets of the year. The Fury Arma Pro 98 kind of came out of nowhere, but really excelled with great performance. So they deserve an honorary mention in the Power 98 square inch category. 100 square inch spin rackets. This was one of the toughest categories to pick a frame because there are two very, very good rackets here. The new Bubble Up Pure Aero, 2023, the 100 square inch version, the legend in the game, perhaps the best selling rackets in the last few years. Could be a competition with the Pure Drive or maybe the Head Speed, but it's up there for sure. You see this everywhere. In 2019, they have the Banana version, updated it with the Rafa design, which is just a cosmetic update in 2021. Perhaps the best looking frame on the market, in my opinion but the update has a denser string pattern, a little bit lower stiffness, so it feels much better on the arm. Uh, some players prefer the power and the spin of the 2019 version. I prefer this one, I think it's a great frame. Used it in some ITF uh, Masters matches and I'm very impressed by it. Might not be for my playing style completely, but if you like spin, but you want a bit more control than the previous version, this is the racket to check out. The difficult part here was to choose between that one and the new extreme mp which is also a great option also with a denser or tighter string pattern over the predecessor so these two frames are both excellent i feel like i'm a bit better with the one hander on the extreme a bit better at the net with the arrow so if you don't have a clear brand preference you probably need to demo these two if you're into spin rackets but they're both excellent and i think very, very solid updates from both Babala and Head this year in the spin category. So 100 square inch spin rackets, I would go to the Babala Pure Aero, but it's a very, very close contest with the Head Extreme MP 2022. 98 square inch spin rackets. This is for more advanced players. Obviously, when you go down in head size, you will have a more control, a bit less power, a bit less forgiveness. Here, the Boom Pro was my choice of the racket of the year. Good control, good spin potential, Nice comfort, not so stiff. A little bit of a trampolining in the string bed again, like where the strings move quite a bit. That is a is little bit my, my peeve with this frame, but it's still excellent in all the other categories of comfort, of spin, of enough power while you're still able to control the ball. I actually prefer this frame over the Extreme Tour. I felt like uh, the new Extreme Tour was not much of an upgrade compared to the previous version. While I feel like the Boom Pro has a good place here, it gives you a bit more forgiveness thanks to the Morph Beam and uh, just an overall very, very good racket. Honorary mention to a cosmetic update to the Technifiber Tempo 298, the IGA, the IGA Schwiontek Signature Edition. I find this racket to be great. It's foam filled, so it has better stability than you think from its weight. Good comfort thanks to the foam as well. Easy to swing, good power. Uh, might need a bit of weight for you who need want more stability at the top of the hoop, but otherwise, great frame. And it was just a cosmetic update this year, but it still should be up there as one of the best 98 square inch rackets if you want power and spin on the market. Moving into the control category, let's look at the 100 square inch versions, which are a little bit easier to use, bit more forgiveness than the 98, which is more of a traditional racket. The most convincing one of this category was the Head Speed Pro. I think this is an excellent frame. The one I had for review had a little bit of a high swing weight. If you don't like that, use the matching service at Tennis Warehouse, for example, or wherever you buy rackets if you're interested in this racket. But the 1820 pattern coupled with the 100 square inch head size, the 23 millimeter beam just pairs well into making a modern frame, which is relatively forgiving, gives you good control, allows you to flatten out your shots. It's just an overall very, very good competitor. I felt like the Oxetic update actually improved the feel on impact and some stability, which is why I hail this one as the best 100 square inches control racket 
of the year. An honorary mention to the Prince ATS Tour 100P. The 100P, when it came out in 2015, was an excellent frame, good feel, good control. Also 18, 20, 100 square inches in the spec range. Uh, they went a bit stiffer with the 2019 update. I didn't think they really got it together there. This one is more back to the softer feeling, 61 RA strong, very nice performing frame. Not sure if I prefer the 2015 still because it has a bit more direct feel, but overall this is also a very, very good racket, the Prince ATS Tour 100P. Then we come to the last category of the year, it's the 98 square inch control rackets. Many like this category, this is where you usually find the blades, maybe the prestigious or radicals. This year, uh, one racket really stole the show for me was the Technifiber TF40 305 gram version. Both the 1820 and the 1619 patterns are great. I prefer the 1820, a little bit more plow through, a higher swing weight, but the 1619 is also excellent. This is one of the best control rackets on the market, the Technifiber TF40. I think it performs in, on all levels very well and should appeal to many players looking for control oriented rackets. An honorary mention to the racket that Guy Monfils switched to in the beginning of the year, the Artengo TR960 Control Tour. This one was a racket that many thought that he would still be using his old Wilson H19, but have it painted to look like the cosmetic of the Artengo. But this racket actually has some strong merits on its own. It was produced some years back by a famous racket designer whose name now eludes me but part of an air tech, I think it was called the series. This frame actually provides excellent feel, good control, 1619 for more spin, 1820 for a bit more directional control. I, I felt like I needed to add some weight to the hoop, but when I did, it, the racket performed excellently. And I would say the Technifiber TF40 is playable straight out of the box, while this one might need a bit of tweaking. Also the quality control of this frame wasn't super impressive in terms of like the paint looked a bit off and, and certain things. These are however not really uh, important if it's all about how the racket plays. This was just some small cosmetic things that I noticed. However, the price point is like half of most other rackets on the market. So you can really expect top-notch quality in terms of these smaller things. So there you have it. Those are my favorite rackets of the year in power, spin and control categories. And in control 100 square inch, I also will add the word versatility because I think it works for many, many different types of players. Bear in mind that these are the frames that were released in 2022. There are obviously other rackets in the category released in 2021 or 2020, which are also very good. So it's not like a, a final version of the best rackets right now, but the best rackets released in 2022, these are my personal favorites. Do you have any comments about these? Do you agree with my selection? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Very keen to hear your comments. If you want to support Tennis Nerd, check out my friends and affiliates in the description as well. If you use my links, I get a small commission. No extra cost to you. Big thanks if you do. You get 10% off for on Grapple Snake strings, for example, on Nordic Dots apparel. Great looking tennis uh, stuff that I wear in my videos in recent times. So use the code TennisNerd10 to get 10% off or the link in the description. And if you're in the jungle about what racket you should use, check out my course, The Road to the Right Racket, 50% off until the end of the year. Then it goes back to its original pricing, teaches you more about rackets and helps you with recommendations for uh, your level and your game style. So check that out. I also have a consultation service on tennisner.net. Just go to the help page there and you'll find it. That is all. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.